Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News. Today, we're going to bring some light to the Pitzel Glacier Global Warming Funeral. Now, if you haven't heard, this is the second funeral for a glacier, a mountain glacier, in as many months. Pitzel Glacier now in Switzerland, they're holding a funeral uh, yesterday for the lost glacier due to global warming. The only problem is that these people didn't look into any information uh, about the history of the glaciers in Switzerland. But they have been watching CNN and other mainstream media outlets, and that led them to believe that it was their fault that this glacier um, is melting. And to add insult to injury, Dozens of people showed up, and some media outlets are claiming hundreds of people showed up. When I can assure you, there's no way to count hundreds of people here. There are tens of people on this glacier, and they're all global warming alarmists. Now, as a geologist, I want to draw your attention to the um, photo comparison here, 2006 to 2018. Right before the loss of this glacier, you can see stratigraphy in the old glacier and here in 2006 you can see stratigraphy in this glacier you can see all the years of glacial building straight up and it's literally been cut in half and this is indicative of a glacier that was dead decades ago maybe a hundred years ago not a glacier that recently died that they're giving a funeral for, for but this glacier hasn't actually built up a layer in decades and in fact there's a truncated area here this unconformity was another melting period where this glacier could be from the mini ice age and this one could be from the Dalton minimum. And now they're both melted because none of them have been building for the last hundred years. And some more information on the Pizzol Glacier. I'll leave you links to it and the evolution of the melt. At no point was this ever a glacier that was building ice and flowing out one side within the last at least 100 years at no point. So claiming that this is our fault is kind of disingenuous, and I'll get to the point. Um, here's a paper I found on precipitation and temperature changes and the evolution of small glaciers in southeastern European Alps during the last 100 years. And if, if it was your fault and it was man-made, now this is one of the most recent papers and the most pertinent. Uh, to this topic because all of them corroborate the same thing and I'm going to show you what that thing is. The thing is that there is no linear relationship <laughs> between ice and carbon dioxide or man and I'm coming down here to the conclusions and this is the important data set we want to look at. What you're looking at here is the terminus fluctuation of one of these mountain glaciers. And so you can see them reseeding and building and then reseeding again and then building again. Some of them are building right now, including Canaan, as we head into the grand solar minimum. But you can see here these multi-decadal oscillations, which are based on climate fluctuations, natural climate variability, not man. Uh, from 1950 to 1990, we burned some of the most carbon dioxide and fossil fuels ever on Earth. And this is when all these glaciers were growing. Yeah. And this is also the time of the Ice Age scare in the 1970s. Yeah. So you can see what we're pointing out here. The fraud in plain sight. Global warming, global cooling. Global warming, global cooling. It's a natural cycle. It's not your fault. It has everything to do with all of the factors that we're uncovering before your very eyes on this channel. European glaciers have been coming and going for thousands of years. True. But according to this narrative, they're just going now. They're never coming back based on no evidence ever. Just a theory, just a belief, a hope that we're all going to die. I don't know why they keep up with it. We're going to leave you with some facts and I think this will really end the worry about us all burning up. This is modeling the last glacial cycle, ice dynamics in the Alps. This paper coming out in 11th January 2018, it basically shows you everything you need to know. Now here's Switzerland. 
And Pizzol Glacier is right here at the curve in this river. So notice this curve and Pizzol Glacier is right here where I'm pointing, right in this region. So as we watch the retreat and advance of glaciers for the last 100,000 years, I'm going to continuously be pointing to this place. I hope you enjoy the video and we'll do an analysis when it's done. And here you know, at the bottom of the screen, you can see the time. 108,000 years ago, we're reaching maximum glaciation. The Pizzol Glacier is up here in the top right. And at this point, it probably doesn't exist. It's coming and going. Pulse, there it is, there it goes. It's there and it's not there. So there was a time period when the Pizzol Glacier was formed and melted like every few thousand years. And then here we... And you're going to watch some of the maximum glaciation occur just shortly. We're heading into some of the coldest times on Earth ever. Between 50,000 and 25,000 years ago, major continental glaciation happening. There's one pulse at 66. And then a receding. And Pitzel Glacier is ice-free here in the middle of the Ice Age. Look at that. Remember Pitzel. It's right here. There it is, covered in ice as we head into some of the major glaciation of the Wisconsinian is coming up here. Some of the most ice ever on Earth coming up in the next few seconds, and you'll see how these glaciers grow exponentially. Just prior to the catastrophic solar flare, the Younger Dryas event, the ensuing cometary debris, it's right here, maximum glaciation at Pizzol Glacier, and then a melt-off. The first dryas, and the second dryas, and then the no ice, right there. And that was 10,000 years ago. It was actually completely ice-free here. Let me get to that point if I can. Look at that melting off there. And look at sea level rising 300 feet. Not because of you. Isn't that amazing? Pitzel Glacier is, is not there. There was no Pitzel Glacier <laughs> 240 years ago. There was no ice. Mini Ice Age much? So what you should glean out of this is that climate... Variability has been happening for 100,000 years, not because of you, not because of CO2, but because of climate cycles driven by our sun and our solar system, which could be connected to the center of the Milky Way. And it is every paleoclimatologist's dream to find out what that 100,000-year cycle is. Is it Milankovitch? Does Milankovitch match up? with some other electrical circuit in our Milky Way, is that's what is driving the dynamo. It's not all Newtonian mechanics. We know this. We know it's electric. We know there are other things affecting the ice. We also know that CO2 is plant food and that humans barely are responsible for just a fraction of all the CO2 on the Earth. The major controller of CO2 are the oceans, not you. So until we tax the oceans, we should be calling out these alarmists for the frauds that they are. We're headed into a cool period. It's called the grand solar minimum. These things are proven. These are facts we're sharing with you. The facts are that glaciers come and grow, and it is certainly not your fault. Can you imagine all the funerals that would have occurred 8,000 years ago in these valleys? It must have been amazing. Hope you got something out of the video. We live in an ice age. It just happens to be warm. We call it the interglacial. And based on every single model and the last four interglacials, this one is over. The time is now to start preparing. The ice has been gone too long. The sea level has already risen. It will soon begin to drop. And the ice will begin to build. Are you ready?
Be safe.